exam pile at the back here. So what we have, a number of exams. Um, the first one is the list. Okay, let's talk about the list first, okay? Because there I've listed all of the exams that we're going to be doing. The very first one there that says SACE 2020, that is the exam from last year. And we're going to do that for our trial exam. So if you want, you could write the word trial in there. But that's when we're going to do that one. The other ones I've printed for you here are the 2020 sample exam, okay? So that is this one here, the SACE exam, and there's two booklets to it, all right? And the reason I printed it as two booklets is because it was two PDF files, all right? Um, and you will get two booklets in your actual exam. The MASA one and the, uh, the, the 2019 methods exam, I've printed both of them as well, so they're the next two on the list. There's the MASA 2020 and the SACE 2019 exam. I've printed both of them for you guys, but I've just printed them as one booklet because it was one PDF file. But you'll notice, you know, there's a second booklet halfway through. It says booklet two there. Okay, so that's just to try and keep it together, but it will be two books in when you get it printed out for your actual exam and for the trial exam. All right, and I've just listed them, I think, in order of importance. Okay, so the SACE 2020, I think that's going to be the most indicative of what it's going to be like because it's two hours and it's, um, and it's uh, last year's. You have the sample exam, which is also a SACE developed resource. So again, it's a good indication of what it's about and it's two hours. And then the MASA 2020 exam um, is, is this one that's also designed to be two hours long. Okay, everything from the MASA 2020 exam, um, everything below that is designed for three hours. Okay, so remember they ch last year was the first time they had the two hour exam. So it's not to say the questions are invalid, it's just to say it's not designed for a length to complete within two hours. Okay, the questions are still very important. So there's a big list there, and I didn't print it this big on purpose. It's because I've been printing booklets and then forgot to change my printer settings, so we're sort of lucky it worked out really. Um, it could have been a disaster. Okay, um, and then we have extra resources, all right? And so within there, I've got lots of different things or areas that you can focus on. So I've printed these three, the top three things for everyone. And anything you want in particular, I'm happy to print it, but you just need to let me know, can I please have a booklet of that? Can I have a copy of that? It's all on the Google Drive, and there's solutions to all of it on the Google Drive as well, okay? So we're sort of coming to a period today when we, we'll do chapter seven today, and then we've sort of brushed up on everything in the textbook. So what our plan is to sort of make sure we've understood all of the content that we've learnt, Bobby, and now it's like, now let's go out into this sort of exam world and look at exam questions, exam situation, and let's, let's practice that, okay? So, uh, any questions about that sort of summary there? All right, so you need to let me know what resources you want. Um, let's do the sheet for today. So um, and maybe some of you missed that one that's here. Did anyone miss that sheet on the way in? Yeah. Yep. So we've got one, two, three. Can you guys take a copy? Yeah. 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 Okay, so this takes us back to chapter seven in the textbook. And in seven, so, so chapter six, right, we did chapter six for homework, holiday homework in term one. And chapter six was just about finding mean, median, mode. It was about looking at data sets. So it was very basic statistical concepts. In chapter seven, this is where we talk specifically about discrete random variables. Now, 7a is just trying to highlight the difference between discrete variables and continuous. So that's what we did all in exercise 7a. So we should remember discrete, we're counting them. Continuous, it's something we measure. Then in 7b, we get into discrete probability distributions. Okay, so that's a table that would have events and then the probability is listed next to it. So let's do this question together. We've got, um, let x be the result when the spinner alongside is spun. So we can see we can get a one, two, three, or four. Draw a uh, distribution in a table. Okay, so let's draw the table up here. We're gonna have the events and the probability of the events occurring. Okay, remember that, X is the event, and probability of the random variable capital X taking on event lowercase x is the probability something here. So our possible events are one, two, three, four, four. And what we can see is each sort of, each sort of pie is, each sort of um, piece of pie there is evenly shaped. So, and we can see there's three ones. Three out of eight. Alright, so the problem is getting the one is three out of eight. 
the probability of getting a 2 is going to be 2 out of 8. We could simplify it to 1 out of 4, but I think it's very useful when doing these problems to have the same denominator. Okay, very useful. Uh, 1 out of 8, uh, 2 out of 8, and then we're up to the number 3. 3 only appears once, so that's a probability of 1 out of 8, and 4 appears twice, so that's a probability of 2 out of 8. Now we know it's a valid probability distribution because all of the probabilities add up to 1, don't they? So we have 3 on 8 plus 2 on 8, that's 5 on 8, 6 on 8, 7, 8, 8 divided by 8 is 1. So the sum of all probabilities is 1, it's valid. So that's part A. Part B would be to draw a graph of it. Um, so just very, very quick, quick graph where you have your probability on the y-axis and your events on the x-axis. So we've got event 1, 2, 3 and 4. Um, and then let's just go in 8, isn't it? There's 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8. So event 1 had a probability of 3, 8. Event 2 had a probability of 2, 8. Event 3 had a probability of 1, 8. And event 4 had a probability of 2, 8. Let me know if I'm going quick. Find the mode and the median of the distribution. Okay, so the mode is the event with the highest probability. So the mode is one. Okay. And the median is the event that occurs when the cumulative probability exceeds 0.5. Okay, um, uh, so what are we using? I think just the only word median. Median is, um, so here we've got 3 on 8, plus 2 on 8 is going to be 5 on 8. So it's when event 2 is occurring that the cumulative probability exceeds 0 0.5, so the median is 2. Okay, do we remember that? When we add the probabilities up together, here we've got 5 on 8, which is 0 0.625. So that's larger than 0 0.5, so the median occurs at this event. Okay? Uh, part D, find the probability of x being less than or equal to 3. Alright, so that means the probability of getting the event 3, event 2, or event 1. And that's just the sum of these probabilities. So that's going to be 6 on 8. And because we're asked, it's an answer. We can simplify it to 3 on 4 or 0 0.75. Okay, so then, um, then part 7c. So notice how when we introduce probability distribution, we only did mode and median, and then in 7c, that's when we looked at the mean. Okay, because the mean of a probability distribution is e of x, which is the sum of each event times its probability. So we know from our calculator, we could put this in list 1 and this in list 2 and calculate it that way, get our calculator to find out the mean, or we can just calculate it manually. It's 1 times 3 on 8 plus 2 times 2 on 8 plus 3 times 1 on 8 plus 4 times 2 and 8. And this is where it's really useful to have the same denominator, okay? Because that number out front just multiplies the top, and then we just add up all the fractions as well. So we've got 3 on 8, plus 4 on 8, plus 3 on 8, plus 8 on 8, and then 7, 10, 18 on 8. What's that mean? 1, 2.25. questions? Okay, so then we did um, 7D where we learned some formulas for the variance and standard deviation. So that was just following the formula. 
Um, in 7e, we have the properties of y equals ax plus b. Um, so I, ha I haven't listed them here. Um, we've got 7f, which is the Bernoulli distribution, which is when you have a one trial. So what's a Bernoulli distribution? It's when you're performing the experiment once. Okay? Two outcomes and one trial. And then a binomial is where we have repeated Bernoulli, where we're repeating the experiment a number of times. So this is a question from the binomial distribution. The local bus service does not have a good reputation. The AAM bus will run late on average two days out of every five. Okay. Uh, for any week of the year taken at random, find the probability of the 8am bus being on time on all seven days. Okay, so this is a, there's a number of ways we can do BPD calculation, but let's break it down. So the probability of the bus being late, all right, we're told it's late on average two out of every five days. Okay, so that's the probability of it being late, which means the probability of it being on time, okay, is three out of five. So we can just think about these, but those things as the inverse of one another. It's either late or it's on time. Those are mutually exclusive. Okay, so what is the probability of, and that's what the question asks for, of it being on time on all seven days? Okay, so there's three ways we can do this. Okay, there's three ways we can do this. The first is um, this way, okay? We're talking about seven successes from seven trials. So this is the event that's asking, so what's the probability of being on time on all seven days? That is seven successes from seven trials times the probability of success, which is three on five to the power of the number of successes, times the probability of failure to the number of failures. Okay, that's a binomial distribution formula. Okay, so we could calculate it like that. That's procedure number one. Procedure num number two would, go, would be to go into our calculator, BPD, and we have X and P. All right, X is the number of successes, N is the number of trials, P is the probability of success. So we're talking about seven successes, seven trials, and probability of success at three on five. All right, so if we put this in, it's gonna generate the same answer as if we put this in, okay? And then, so that's procedure number two. And then the third procedure would be, well, what's the probability of it being on time on the first day? Well, that's three on five. And then it's got to be on time on the second day, which is three on five. And then it's got to be on time on the third day. In fact, it's got to be on time every day. And so it is just three on five to the power of seven. Okay, that's the third procedure. Now notice the relationship between our first one and our third one here. Okay, that part's the same. That's because C77 is just one and two, anything to the power of zero is just one as well. So they just, they're the same, exactly the same. Relationships. All right, so that's the answer to part A. Then part B says, what is the probability of the bus being on time only on Monday? Okay, now you might be sort of wondering, am I considering a five day working week? Am I considering the whole week? Now it tells us in one of the sentences there, it's sort of right in the middle of the text, it says, for any week of the year taken at random. So that means it wants us to consider all seven days. All right. Um, what is the probability of being only on time, only on Monday? So that would not be um, the probability of x equals one. Okay. Okay, because that, if we were gonna do this calculation, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be our BPD. We've got one success out of seven trials. Um, with the probability of success of three on five, okay? And you could put that in here as well, you know, one success, seven trials, one success here, six failures, all right? So that'd be the other way to calculate it. But why is this not the solution? Okay, this is the probability of it being late on any one day. This question says specifically, what is the probability of being late only on Monday, okay? And so to do that, to work that one, if it's asking for such a specific scenario, we need to, like, let's think about days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right, what it means is it's late here. Okay, so the probability of it being late, we know, is two out of five. 
and then it's on. Uh, is that what it's asking? Is it, by the probability the bus is on time only on Monday. So sorry, on time on Monday, and then late every other day. Okay, and so then what this calculation is going to be, conditional probability, 3 on 5 times 2 on 5 to the power of 6. Okay, that's only on Monday. Any six days, okay? Could be these six days, could be Monday through to Saturday, that's on time. Could be uh, Tuesday through to Sunday, that's on time. Could be Tuesday through to Friday and Saturday, Sunday, that's on time. Any any six days, I've only said five, but any six days, you get the picture. So that is the probability of our random variable taking on the value of six, okay? So, BPD calculation. Um, Six successes, seven trials, probability of success three on five. Okay. Or C, six successes, seven trials, um, probability of success is three on five, probability of failure two on five. Okay. Both of these are going to generate the same solution. So let's calculate that. to statistics. Hmm, interesting. Six successes, seven trials. 0 0.1306 or 0 0.131. Okay. Uh, so that's probably been on time on any six days. What about the probability that's on time on at least four days at least four days so if you think of how many days it could be on time it could be on time on zero days it could be on time only on one day in a week two days in a week three days in a week four five six or it could even be on time in all seven days so this question here says on at least four so that means it's on time on four days or more we're talking about four days five days six days or seven days all right so when, we, when we've learnt this, what that is, that's going, well, what's the probability we've been on time on four days, plus the, plus the probability we've been on time on five days, plus the probability we've been on time on six days. So you could add them up individually, but it's going to take a long time. Instead, we can use the BCD, which is the binomial cumulative distribution, all right? Which is where we have a lower boundary, an upper boundary, number of trials, and probability of success, all right? So here, we're saying at least four, so the lower boundary of our calculation here is four. Our upper boundary is seven, we have seven trials and probability of success three on five. So we've got a good 70% chance of it being on time on at least um, 0 0.710, of it being on time on at least four days. Cool. So that's chapter seven. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do some of that.